स्मरण करें हेलो ओलंपिक सर इट इज नॉट कमिंग या नाउ इट्स कमिंग ऑन माय यूट्यूब या या Oh, it's gone again. Okay, so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you all know that Alambic. is always uh, dedicated to propagating academics and this is another endeavor of uh, alambic along with royal pole hospital prichi to propagate knowledge and uh, we all know that uh, post graduates all over the world um, are really benefited by conducting grand rounds and last grand rounds were con was conducted by a uh, civil hospital ahmedabad and it was a super hit and uh, more than 10000 people have watched it around the world in fact almost all the medical colleges have watched the uh, program so again we are bringing to you the second edition of grand rounds and in fact um, we are planning for grand rounds this is primarily dedicated to the post graduates how the examiners are going to ask you uh, questions it's going to be just like an exam so the uh, examinee has not been informed about Uh, the questions which are going to be asked so she is also going to face it like an exam and uh, last time also it was a very thrilling uh, program so this is going to be first conducted in uh, civil hospital and then we have also asked madras medical college and of course uh, uh, professor mohanty and sms medical college jaipur and we will uh, bring in so many medical colleges from all over india so that uh, we will cover the complete range of questions we will finish um the uh, the year which was finished last time so this time it's going to be larynx and next time it's going to be the nose and the next time it's going to be uh, maybe a thyroid or uh, some other uh, case so each uh, college is uh, going to conduct uh, three or four depending upon the convenience and then we'll be um, going to various colleges uh, you know uh, and then we'll be conducting the grand rounds so today we have with us uh, the team from civil hospital and uh, professor rajesh vishwakarma um, uh, you know him he is uh, one of the dons of cochlear implants in india and of course uh, professor bela prachapati uh, actually heads the department of uh, civil hospital she is a very uh, renowned examiner and also a proficient academician and uh, we have also with us dr uh, deepesh Who was with us last time, as well as um, we have Dr. Nipa Delal. So these are the four examiners. Of course, uh, we'll be joined with uh, Dr. Raj, uh, Raj, uh, Rajesh Vishwakarma a little later. Um, yes. Yeah, till then, excuse me, sir. Dr. Viral Prajapati will be uh, the fourth examiner. Till then, Dr. Viral Prajapati, sir. Dr. Viral Prajapati is also. joining us as an examiner so now the candidate's name is uh, dr shalu gupta so dr shalu gupta is a very brilliant student uh, she is a third year uh, resident in uh, civil hospital and i'm sure you're going to enjoy this whole program uh, and if you want to ask questions you have to log on to my youtube channel or you have given the link of alambic and uh, the but the question i am seeing only the youtube my youtube channel so if you want to ask questions you have to put it on my channel so we can discuss it later so uh, the uh, id of my channel is janakiram pn j a n a k i r a m p n and you can this uh, will be available for viewing i will not uh, take it out and it is going to be available for viewing to all so over to dr professor bela prajapati to uh, take over the whole uh, session the dice is all yours and welcome madam and thank you very much for your time and also your uh, interest and enthusiasm to teach the whole world and uh, you are now the teacher of teachers and uh, really a big thanks to you over to you madam thank you very much for a good in, in, introduction dr janki we are highly obliged to have such a program in our department and civil hospital amdavad 
without wasting much of our time let us proceed with the case presentation sir yeah please madam the the stage is all yours thank you sir thank you good evening i am presenting a case of 62 year old female patient named uh, hindu female patient named savita ben parmar housewife by occupation Uh, belonging to lower socio economic status residing at Am amraiwadi came to ent opd civil hospital ahmedabad with chief complaint of change of vomit since two months patient was relatively asymptomatic before two months when she developed complaint of change of voice which was insidious in onset and noted that she could not produce a voice of same intensity as before she has been to a general practitioner and took some medications but did not have any improvement she says she has to work hard to produce a voice which is not as loud as it was before history of vocal fatigue is present history of difficulty to speak in noisy environment is present history of breathlessness on exertion is present there is no history of diarrhea how did you look for the difficulty of breathlessness on exertion Now, when we ask the patient uh, whether he he has difficulty in uh, difficulty in breathing at uh, rest or whether he has when he she she like climbs stairs, then she had difficulty in breathing. Then the patient complains that when she climbs uh, one floor or two floor, then she has difficulty in breathing. So we suggest yes, that is the way you tell that the patient has difficulty, difficulty on breathing on exertion. exertion. All right, or some strenuous work also that will also precipitate such breathlessness. Yes, All right. What are the causes for change of the voice since two months? You are telling. What comes to your mind? Uh, Ma'am, uh, it can be since it is in the. Ma'am, it can be due to any uh, nerve injury. It can be due to um, which nerve injury? Ma'am, most commonly it is recurrent laryngeal nerve injury. If uh, nerve injury is there. It, so you mean to say it is a vocal cord paralysis? Yes, ma'am. It might so be the common of the common one cause of, the of uh, change of voice yes. since two months is vocal cord paralysis. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, then vocal cord malignancy also, glottic uh, malignancy can present with the uh, vocal uh, change of voice uh, since it is of short duration and. Any, uh, ma'am, uh, vocal nodule. Yes, very good. Then vocal polyp, okay. vocal cyst. all right fine proceed further there is no history of diurnal variation there is no history of nasal regurgitation there is no history of cough or blood stains why you are asking diurnal variations uh, sir certain diseases present with the diurnal variations like vocal nodules and vocal polyp uh, they uh, as the day passes the patient has more more difficulty in uh, more change of voice as the day passes on uh, certain diseases like rinkies edema and chronic laryngitis they improved as the day passes uh, during okay. evening hours there is no history of difficulty in swallowing or loss of weight or appetite there is no history of neck swelling there is no history of fever there is no history of ear ache no history of trauma to chest or neck why you are asking negative history related ear uh, sir so in the Uh, in larynx, larynx, the larynx and oral cavity, there is a, a, a referred otalgia can be there due to the same nerve supply as brachiopharyngeal nerve. It can be due to the malignancy in tons, tonsil, throat, the uh, piriform fossa growth, or uh, T M joint. Right. Yes. Your patient is female. So, what are the common conditions you see in the females, which is You know, voice-related conditions. I mean, females' uh, vocal nodules is most common. Hmm. hmm. And uh, why? Why vocal? And she is a housewife. You uh, ask about occupation. Uh, so, what is the yes? I mean, is there any history of voice abuses there or not? No, yeah. no, sir. There is no history. Because you say there, she is housewife. Yes, ma'am. Right. She's and what is the role of occupation? Uh, uh, I mean, which affects your voice in, quality? In certain professions, such as singers and. Uh, Yes, in certain professions like singers those who have a history of vocal abuse or vocal misuse they can present with the change of voice like no vocal only person language. with vocal abuse or uh, no, no, yes strain. what are the other conditions which affects voice of the patient what are the other occupation or professional hazards 
scream screamers yes and uh, anybody anybody else from the audio residents can also answer teachers nodule singer nodule is okay then what are the other profession which affects your voice or maybe occupation not profession or occupation uh laringo selling template blowers yes then uh, uh the uh patient working in uh, uh there is a for uh, late late toxicity can uh, late in organ of phosphorus toxicity can cause uh, change of voice there is no history of trauma to what chest. about hawkers yes hawkers and your patient is from low socio economic status yes there is no history of trauma to chest or neck past history Have you asked about hemoptysis? Yes, ma'am. I have asked no. about cough okay. and there is no history of cough and blood stain sputum or hemoptysis. Okay. Patient has a past history of operated for left carcinoma breast three years back. Post operatively, patient took twenty five cycles of radiotherapy and six cycles of chemotherapy. There is no history of similar complaints in the past. No history of TB, tuberculosis, diabetes mellitus, hypertension. asthma or previous surgeries in neck ah uh, which are the different manifestations of larynx in cough patient mom in tuberculous laryngitis patient present with the uh, diplophonia and uh, hoarseness of voice in that uh, uh, mom retinoids are swollen and intraretinoid granulations are there mainly posterior uh, one third of the glottis is affected in tuberculous laryngitis and uh, uh, congested vocal cords and edematous vocal cords as well yes pale edematous retinoids right. and the entire laryngeal mucosa is pale and edematous yes. why there is more granulations in the posterior part or in the intraretinal region and not in the anterior part one of the reason is because there is coughing constant present in cox patient the sputum gets accumulated in the posterior part of the larynx and the interretinal region causing granulation tissues sir i would like to say that dr vishwakarma has joined us a oh, welcome professor vishwakarma sir uh, it's a delight actually to have you again uh, for the second edition of this uh, very very famous grand rounds we really welcome you wholeheartedly and uh, really congratulate you for this fantastic pursuit on to academics thank you very much sir thank you janki we will continue with uh, what we have been started and we'll Please. go on and see that the whole program goes well thank you sir thank so you. today like as you as you have already seen yeah. dr malu is presenting the case of larynx yeah. and let us see what she has to tell about the case Okay. Proceed. Yeah. Yes, Shalu. Uh, family history not significant. Personal history: patient is not smoker, not alcoholic. Sleep cycle. Uh, 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 can I interrupt just a minute, uh, sir? Uh, professor, uh, yes. Professors, professor Bela, uh, Professor Rajesh, uh, G. Uh, please try to exhaust all the questions so that you know uh, there will be a question bank like thing. So that uh, there are so many people watching all around uh, India. so they were, they put a request that you know uh, um, is this all the questions they asked i said next time i'll tell professor so that you know the questions are uh, more in number so just yeah, want we can we will continue asking questions yeah. and the no so the whole question back is exhausted yes, yes yeah like that yeah. right right okay yeah yes shall continue patient is not smoker not alcoholic sleep cycle is normal bubble bladder habits are normal diet is what is the importance of asking the uh, smoking habits ma'am I mean smokers uh, there are certain diseases that are very common like uh, laryngeal cancers glottic cancer is most common in smokers and also rinkies edema is more common in smokers these are predisposing conditions which 
uh, alcohol will also precipitate the yes, pathology. So you should positively ask for that also. Yes, All right. Appetite is adequate. General examination, patient is conscious, cooperative, well-oriented to time, place, person, well-built and well-nourished, afebrile on palpation, pulse rate is 90 per minute in right radial artery, normal in rhythm and volume and rate, but blood pressure is 110 by 70 mm mercury in right brinkle artery in supine position. There is no evidence of paler, clubbing, ictrus, cyanosis and lymphadenopathy. On local examination, I have examined the patient. What else would you like to examine in this patient in general examination in neck as this patient was having being operated for breast malignancy in past? Ma'am, any lymph node enlargement? Which lymph nodes are commonly involved when there is breast? Ma'am, operated for breast and cancer. Axillary nodes and when mediastinal nodes can be enlarged, but we cannot. A palpation, palpation in neck most commonly is the supraclavicular node. Supra you have to positively look for yes. when you are examining the general examination yes. in neck. All right. And secondly, what else? For engorgement of engorgement. the veins. Yes. All right. I have examined the patient in proper light and exposure after informed consent. Oral cavity, lips, gums, gingiva, buccal mucosa, anterior two third of the tongue, floor of mouth, heart palate, retromolar trigone, gingivobuccal sulcus is normal. Bilateral anterior and posterior pillars, tonsillar fossa are normal. Posterior one third of the tongue is normal. Palatal reflex and gag reflex are present. When they're absent associated with vocal cord or change of voice. Now in case of high vagal lesion, palatal and gag reflex will be absent. For example, which such patients do you come across in OPD? Patient may present only with regurgitation of the food or like that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I mean, palatal paralysis, like any viral origin, uh, like diphtheria may present. Yes, the, very good. Which are the other signs of diphtheria? Ma'am, other signs of diphtheria are mostly uh, patient will have difficulty in swallowing food and will have high grade fever. Uh, drooling of saliva will be there, and the patient might have difficulty in swallowing or difficulty in breathing also if it is laryngeal diphtheria. Whitish. Yeah. Whitish membrane will be white present membrane. on the. Uh, bilateral tonsils and anterior pillars and uvula yes. and posterior pharyngeal wall. First of all, yes. all the patients, when the patients present to you, the patient will be very toxic. Yes, toxic. He will be toxic. He will have a bull neck. Yes, bull all neck. right. That will be drooling of saliva, nasal discharge. When you look into the oral cavity, there is whitish membrane. When you try to pull out, there will be bleeding. bleeding on that. And there is, of course, breathlessness. breathlessness. But first and first foremost thing is patient is very toxic. You should never forget that. With fever, of course. On indirect laryngoscopy examination, vallecula, epiglottis, area epiglottic folds appears normal. Bilateral false cord appears normal. Bilateral true cord appears pearly white in color and normal in structure. Superior and medial edges of vocal cords are normal. Left vocal cord is not mobile and lies in paramedian position. Left vocal cord is not mobile and lies in paramedian position. Right vocal cord is mobile. There is conatory gap present. Both pyriform fossa are normal. Arytenoids on both the sides appears normal. Subglottic and upper uh, tracheal rings are normal. Which are the structures that are not very well seen on indirect laryngoscopy? Uh, Ma'am, uh, anterior commissure area. You may start from, okay, fine then. Uh, Ma'am, base of the epiglottis will, will cannot be seen. A, uh, base of the vellicula. And what is base of the epiglottis? The posterior what? surface. Of so say laryngeal surface, surface of, of epiglottis. epiglottis. That is one. Yes, Second. Uh, remember, uh, apex of pyriform fossa. Apex of the pyriform fossa. Very good. Then. And ventricles. 
ventricles an anterior commissure anterior commissure and the, like entire subglottic area we cannot and subglottis yes. all right the neck examination is normal tracheal is the trachea is central in position post trachoid crepitus is present there is no lymphadenopathy rest all cranial nerve examinations are normal the nose Uh, shape of nose is normal on tip elevation vestibule anterior end of the septum is normal any positive findings in the nose then you may omit that nose and ear examination are normal all right on the basis of my history and clinical examination my provisional diagnosis is left vocal cord paralysis under investigation fine okay now which are the different positions of the vocal cord um and the there are uh, in palsy yes ma'am first to the midline position ma'am in paramedian position it lies 1.5 mm uh, away from the midline 3.1.5 uh, mm away from the midline and in cadaveric position it lies 3.5 mm away from the midline when will there be cadaveric position uh, ma'am it is a neutral position abduction and adduction start from the cadaveric position and it uh, when the when the after the death of the patient the vocal cord lies in that position all right so when do you Which are the different adductors of the vocal cord? Adductors of the vocal cords are mainly uh, lateral cricoarytenoid muscle, uh, thyroarytenoid muscle, and interarytenoid muscle. All right. Now, in this patient, uh, how will you proceed? Ma'am, I would like to reconfirm my finding first by the ninety degree Hopkins rod examination. All right. And after the, uh, after confirming my findings, I will go for the investigations to rule out the cause of the palsy. Now, in this case, it is a left vocal cord paralysis. Yes, so, what are the common causes of left vocal cord paralysis? Uh, Ma'am, the common causes can be a it it may it may be traumatic or neoplastic or any neurological cause. In in, in traumatic causes, it may may be itrogenic or non itrogenic. uh it like uh, what i am meaning to say there is di gross difference when there is right vocal cord paralysis and when there is left vocal yes, cord paralysis apex of the lung tumor of the apex of the lung so bronchogenic carcinoma chest lesions chest lesion will present commonly with present with left vocal cord, left vocal cord paralysis, paralysis. Yes, sir. and right vocal cord paralysis we come across when there is a surgical, surgical trauma, trauma like thyroid surgery yes uh, cervical spine well, uh, neck para thyroid surgery para thyroid all surgery right. neck dissections all right cervical approach uh, what the what is the reason for that ki chest lesion and mediastinal lesions involve left and neck yeah. lesions usually involve right ma'am because the left recurrent laryngeal nerve has a longer course in the uh, in, yes. in the chest so it is more prone to injury from where to where uh ma'am from uh, from starting from the brain stem to uh, what is the course slowly. in brief slowly okay. yes uh ma'am it uh, it it uh, passes posterior to the aortic arch uh, yes. aortic arch and then uh, ascends upwards in the tracheoesophageal groove and right and right it side is given it, off at the it is given off in the subclavian artery and yes. then it ascends so just behind the, the clavicle and then it yes ma'am other than ent course may lead to lvc palsy uh so Uh, and cardiovascular causes can also lead to yes. LVC palsy uh, enlargement of the left, left atrium, atrium that can cause LVC palsy known as Ortner syndrome and uh, aortic aneurysm mitral stenosis yes. mitral due stenosis. to ca any cardiomegaly can cause left vocal cord palsy left vocal cord paralysis <laughs> why in thyroid uh, only right side is involved while left side is less common now because in on right side there is a chance of non recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, there is 0.5 to 2% risk of non recurrent so it is more prone to injury because secondly of it is more it is more superficial, superficial. superficial. left is in the, in the left it is more all right so that is the gross difference when there is right and the left you can very well divide what are the probable causes all right so you may what are the investigation you would like to do in your patients uh, so first we'll do the baseline uh, investigation of chest x ray to rule out any chest lesion in the lungs or uh, then we'll go uh, then we will then we'll go for ct scan 
and after that you tell her that we need to go certain investigation to find out what are the probable causes of this pathology yes. Yes. all right after that you will go for all the baseline investigation hemogram and then x ray chest and then then barium follow we can do to rule out any filling defect in the esophagus and for to rule out esophageal malignancy then we can go for uh, 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 this patient we may not go for any barium swallow as there is no dysphagia per se yes sir so after baseline x ray chest what else would you like to go for um, i will go for a contrast enhanced computerized tomography uh, from skull base to thorax to look for the any lesion in the thorax or the pathway of the poor so you would like the... to go for a ct scan or you would like to do an mri sir uh, first i will go prefer ct scan i'll prefer because patient also has the history of carcinoma breast ex uh, removal so it may present with the metastasis of the lymph mediastinal, mediastinal mass lymph or lymphadenopathy or yes, and then so we can go for a di- uh, direct uh, pan endoscopy uh, to look for any other lesion in the so when you when you go for pan endoscopy what are the endoscopies that you do so, and what do you expect to find in each endoscopy yes sir so we will do the nasopharyngo laryngoscopy we will look for the nasopharynx any lesion in the pharynx and then the any lesion in the uh, larynx esophagoscopy bronchoscopy 
डायरेक्ट लैरिंग उसको बट सपोज यू हैव एक्सरे चेस्ट नॉर्मल सीटी स्कैन नॉर्मल देन व्हाई वांट टू गो फॉर पैन एंडोस्कोपी व्हिच इंफॉर्मेशन यू विल गेट फ्रॉम पैन एंडोस्कोपी बिकॉज़ ऑलरेडी यू हैव इन्वेस्टिगेटेड बाय एक्सरे चेस्ट एंड सीटी थोरैक्स then is there any role of pan endoscopy no, after that any abnormal nodes it seems we can take the biopsy from if any abnormal nodes we can see then we can take the biopsy abnormal any lesion but that you can i mean ct scan reveals that whether nodes are there sometimes you know it is not palpable nodes but even though ct shows lymph node enlargement or when there is no pathology so yes panelscopy and nowadays flexical bronchoscopy is more advocated yes ma'am yes all right when there is uh, focal cord paralysis yes ma'am so you said we will go for panelscopy now describe what all endoscopies will you do and how do you do Uh, so we will uh, we can how will you look for the nasopharynx so we can do the flexible uh, nasopharyngoscopy nasopharyngoscopy uh, we can go from the through, after decongestion of the nose uh, we can insert the flexible endoscope through the uh, nostril and we can see the, visualize the nasopharynx clearly and then introducing further we can see the fa- oropharynx hypo so first hypopharynx. nasopharynx nasopharynx so you can use a flexible scope or you can use a rigid scope also rigid scope also so what do you want to see in the nasopharynx sir any or what could be a lesion which can cause a vocal cord palsy in the nasopharynx the nasopharyngeal carcinoma can lead to cranial, right. lower cranial paralysis so is in case of nasopharyngeal carcinoma we can take the biopsy from there uh, that might causing para- pa- palsy okay so any lesion in the base of skull base of skull in the nasopharynx which can cause or which affects this uh, recurrent laryngeal now you want to look for that yes, so once you have seen that the nasopharynx is okay yes, then so then we can go we can look for the oropharynx then hypopharynx any uh, post cricoid uh, what are the boundaries of oropharynx um, oropharynx so it is it, 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 uh, superiorly from the soft palate and uh, inferiorly up to the hyoid bone imaginary line up to the hyoid bone anterior uh, anteriorly by the posterior pillar of the tonsils and posteriorly by the oropharynx uh, oropharynx okay then so you have done nasopharyngoscopy you have seen the oropharynx then hypopharynx hypopharynx then we'll go for uh, esophagoscopy esophagoscopy what do you want to see in esophagoscopy Sir, any any carcinoma in the esophagus, cervical esophagus. So you want to look for any any pathology. SOL or any pathology in the esophagus. Esophagus, yes. Sir. Okay. And then, sir. We'll Although there is no clinical history. Yes. Mm. And then we'll go for uh, bronchoscopy to look any lesion in the piriform or uh, vocal cords or in the inferior surface of the subglottic region. So we'll check the subglottic. We will do the. bronchoscopy right yes sir fine so you will do all this with a flexible scope so we may do with the flexible or all rigid also okay so for rigid you have to take the patient under general anesthesia general anesthesia fine so is there a condition or do you find a situation where you do with the scope is you don't find any lesion then what to do do you take sample from somewhere yes sir we can take the endobronchial secretions to rule out the tuberculosis or uh, any granulomatous lesion yes when you don't find any lesion you may take secretions, secretions. and for histopathological or yes. routine micro examination yes which which are the areas you will collect the secretions mam from the main bronchus uh, in the brachial secretions we all can also take in bronchial secretions also we can take um, Will you take those secretions? Mm. You. Uh... Okay, so you will only take the secretions. Have you heard of brush biopsy? Yes, sir. What is that? Yes anybody there 
दर्शन नो ईशानी एनीबडी एल्स what are what are the other sites from where you can take biopsies so when you don't find anything positive yeah. and you suspect we can take from the media sinal lymph nodes or if uh, you will not take from media sinal lymph nodes you have not seen any lymph node then multiple spots you will take biopsies say from nasopharynx okay. right yes and uh, then you have as you said from bronchus or trachea right and you will see if there is if anything suspicious areas which when which may not be anything pathological seen there but if there is a suspicious area you can take biopsies okay fine so this is what you said the of your examination part and then biopsy part with the flexible scopes what else will you do uh, sir in this patient particular patient i can go for pet scan also because the patient the patient has a history of carcinoma breast to rule out any metastasis so, so you you will correlate all your examinations uh, with the history of ca breast yes sir right fine so you can go for pet scan what do you want to see in a pet scan and what is a pet scan sir pet it is a positron uh, positron imaging tomography uh, with the done with the fluorodeoxy glucose 18 fdg to say uh, so that we can see the uh, any tumorous lesion or any metastatic lesion in the whole body if any present then we can know so that will help you find out any cause of the might be the media sinal lymph node and large media sinal any tumor so any metastasis, metastasis. Also. it will show you any secondary lesion secondary. or metastasis or any inflammatory lesion yes sir right but it will not pinpoint you to any particular yes. diagnosis yes sir okay then what else for mri brain we can go for if no causes found in all these diseases. no no there is no need for mri brain no, no. now any intracranial uh, see, see skull based symptoms and you have to you have to say one two three all the investigations that you will do or advise to this patient right you said you will go for an x-ray chest you said you will do a ct thorax skull based to this then you said that you will do a pan endoscopy anything else you would like to do anything like you can do for granulomatous disease and investigation as you say there are so much causes of vocal co unilateral vocal cord palsy so granulomatous disease is also the one of the cause so would you like to do any investigations for the granulomatous disease for particular for sarcoidosis we can go do to rule out sarcoidosis but otherwise it will be seen in the ct scan granulomatous disease if present we can if we can see it in the ct scan sarcoidosis is not that common we are talking yes, about cox cox tuberculosis you can go for sputum uh, afb and yes uh, very good cb yes. nat sputum afb yes. so as an ent surgeon suppose this patient is having all those investigations you are telling all is normal so what will be your plan of management now you have done ct scan that is normal you have done uh, x ray chest is normal everything is normal so it is an idiopathic paralysis as per you say now so what do you how will you treat that patient now mam i'll wait for six at least six months to, uh, for the compensation uh, if uh, if can if it can happen but would you like what to give any medical line yes, of treatment uh, uh, till then we can uh, give the patient medical line of management we'll can uh, since but uh, since it is since two two months there there is not much role of steroids otherwise we could have given the uh, tapering dose of steroids but uh, since it is two months then there is no suppose it is idiopathic so what is the most common even though we always consider viral pathology yes, ma maybe it, it is viral, viral pathology so, so which then, type of no we sometimes give multi therapy yes ma'am we can give uh, steroid therapy in uh, tapering doses uh, the prednisolone 1 uh, mg per kg body weight that is okay which other and we can win multi vitamins yes and uh, what is the role of speech therapy yes ma'am speech therapy obviously patient will help with the speech therapy in case of yes. viral pathology so when you consider there is no cause it yes. is idiopathic right yes. you can send your patient for speech therapy. speech therapy but have you stamped it as idiopathic 
No, so I have to do the investigations. So any other investigation you would like to do? Did you do Biram Swal also? Yes, sir. I did okay. all Biram Swal. What is the role of stroboscopy? Yes, ma'am. Stroboscopy, ma'am, it provides us the apparent uh, view of the. Uh, what is stroboscopy? Ma'am, stroboscopy is the apparent uh, real-time uh, view of the uh, vocal cords, the uh, movement of the vocal cords per seen in the particular phase of the phonation. In that, uh, ma'am, uh, we can see the uh, any fine movements of the vocal cord in particular. What cells. are the stages of phonation? Uh, ma'am, there are uh, stage, uh, stages of phonation. Are uh, uh, first it is. Uh, during inspiration, when the subglottic, uh, when the subglottic, uh, during the phase of expiration, when the subglottic pressure is raised, the vocal cord has two lips, lower lips and upper lip. So lower lip will separate during the when the subglottic pressure is raised, and then then the Bernoulli's theorem and the myoelastic properties of the uh, vocal cord, the upper lip will also separate and the lower lip will close. This will yes. result in the air flow and will result uh, result in the phonation, and then the supraglottic area will resonate it. Yes. And will articulate the speech. All right. Or uh, back to the stroboscopy. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Then then the stroboscopy we there is a stro there is an instrument. Okay. And in the stroboscopy, there is an instrument called strobe in which the tungsten uh, tungsten filament is there and which flashes the brief pulses of light over the vocal cords and uh, it uh, which it synchronizes it synchronized with the movement of the vocal cords so we can uh, see the uh, and we can we can see the vo vo movement of the vocal cord in a short duration of the uh, short duration of the, at the same frequency so the slow movement of the vocal cord can be appreciated with the help of stroboscopy which pathologies are better appreciated by the stroboscopy rather than yes, this thing uh, ma'am like uh, vo vocal cyst vocal cyst can be appreciated better because it uh, it involves a uh, because it involves the uh, uh, lamina propria layer so the mucosal wave will be impaired in that in vocal cyst and uh, other is any grow any growth on the vocal cord and uh, any uh, like vocal cord if vocal cord tensioning is there then also mucosal wave will be impaired what is dysphonia and what are the types of dysphonia are uh, they better they are better appreciated by the stroboscopy, stroboscopy rather than this gross lesions what is this um, dysphonia is the uh, this uh, difficulty in the speech difficulty in speaking uh, uh, is this uh, dysphonia there are various types of dysphonia like muscle 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 tension dysphonia spasmodic dysphonia neurological dysphonia what is functional dysphonia the functional dysphonia is a muscle tension dysphonia where there is the there where there is no pathology in the vocal cord itself but it is due to the excessive muscle tension intrinsic and uh, extrinsic laryngeal muscle tension is increased uh, that is uh, functional dysphonia What is dysphonia plica ventricularis? In, ma'am, in dysphonia plica ventricularis, the, there is the increased tension in the intrinsic muscle of the larynx. In the false vocal cords are approximated, adducted yes. firmly. So there is a speech period. is produced by false vocal false cord vocal rather cord. than true. Yes. What is sulcus vocalis? Uh, ma'am, sulcus vocalis. It is a pathology of the vocal cord in which the linear imagination of the epithelium is there, which can reach up to the lamina propria. Malab. it can reach up to uh, so how it is diagnosed what will you see during your scopy examination ma'am there Laryngeal. is an invagination of the medial edge of the vocal cord in sulcus vocalis there can yes. be three types so linear vergiture sul pit okay what is puberphonia puberphonia is ma'am uh, during the puberty when the uh, during the puberty when the pitch is not uh, raised mm -hmm. uh, the pa patient have difficulty in uh, raising the pitch of the voice it is mutational falsetto mutational voice. falsetto yes. and what is the treatment for that uh ma'am for uh, puberphonia we can go for type 3 thyroplasty is there any role of speech therapy yes ma'am speech therapy of course uh, for yeah, if patient usually does not five six sittings are enough if the patient does not respond in nine months so we can wait six to nine months that for yes. then we can go for type 3 therapy what is gutman's pressure sign Ma'am, Gutman pressure sign is the when the patient we we ask the patient to press the thyroid uh, downwards and backwards. If it improves the speech, then it so patient will produce the it will produce low pitch low speech. Low pitch speech. Yes. So in that case, type three is type helpful. Yes. Okay. 
if patient develop a lvc palsy after doing a thyroid surgery and still patient having a complaint of uh, 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 difficulty in uh, breathing as well as complaint of the coughing during swallowing moment so how will you treat this patients so then patient might be having aspiration uh, due to the palsy so then we will have to intervene then we'll go for uh, thyroplasty only thyroplasty laryngeal frame it's so uh, no so post arytenoid arytenoid medialization of arytenoids will have to also be done that will be corrected for the recurrent laryngeal what about the supra laryngeal now so for superior laryngeal now palsy generally no treatment is re required except for the voice therapy but we can go for cricothyroid uh, uh, we um, Crico thyroid approximation can be done. Which are the different types of thyroplasty? Um, there are four types of thyroplasty. Type one is uh, medialization thyroplasty. Type two is which are the methods for medialization thyroplasty? Ma'am, there can be. Uh, and when will you go for it? Yes. So my um, question was that only suppose it is an idiopathic. So first of all. do the patient you are know that he is not going to improve you have to give him such medical line of treatment for reassurance of the patient you may go for injection vitamin b complex therapy yes ma all right and uh, reassure the patient and say to him that if it is not improved by the compensation from the other side we may have to go for this surgery yes ma so which are the methods for doing thyroplasty yes ma'am ma'am in case is within 6 months patient does not improve we will explain the patient about the after 6 months, months ma you ask her for a follow up yes ma'am ma'am we can uh, do the injection laryngoplasty what do you use ma'am in, in injection injection laryngoplasty we can use different the we can just a minute <coughs> what do you do till 6 months before you go for thyroplasty uh, sir you have a vocal cord palsy you have examined that there is no other reason it could be viral idiopathic right and now you want to manage that patient okay after doing all investigations taking proper history and all right so before you do a surgery that period what will you do sir we uh, you said that you will wait for 6 months why do you want to wait for 6 months sir, when you know that there is a palsy and the patient has a problem sir we patient might get improvement with the speech therapy and multivitamins yeah but then if you have to give speech therapy yes, no yes speech therapy okay so Send you will try speech, speech therapy. therapy you will give a trial of speech therapy, speech therapy. to the patient so mm -hmm. that there can be some sort of compensation, compensation right and if it happens then well and good otherwise you can plan yes right what do you do in speech therapy So we will ask the we will tell about we tell the patient about the how to use the voice like uh, pro, maintain vocal hygiene or um, quit uh, smoking if he is does then uh, uh, we will ask the patient to avoid the uh, avoid shouting and avoid uh, talking in the uh, he cannot noise. shout he has already a leakage voice leakage air leakage is avoid there. talking in noisy environment and uh, some maintain life uh, lifestyle modification and uh, there is a method of therapy in uh, speech therapy and that you will you will we advise all this in vocal abuse patient with the vocal abuse or smoking or alcohol lifestyle modification and right or gerd maybe gastro you will ask your plus. speech language pathologist to give speech therapy to this patient and that uh, your therapist will train the patient yes. right to use the muscle, muscle. extra laryngeal muscles, muscles right and there are different methods for it Yes. Right. So with that, you will continue for some time, and see how much improvement happens. Yes. If there is no improvement, or minimal improvement, or not a significant improvement, in six months. Normally, the standard is to wait for six months. It is not necessary that you have to always wait for six months. Right. But say you wait for six months, and then you say, okay, now the vocal cord is in its or uh, same position. It has not uh, compensated. and now you want to improve the voice so you plan for a medialization thyroplasty right so when you plan for a medialization thyroplasty you decide how to do medialization thyroplasty as madam asked there are different ways of doing medialization thyroplasty the first one you said is injection thyroplasty yes. right so which are the so different materials how do you do injection thyroplasty 
and what are the material you use for injection thyroplasty we'll go one by one okay dr rajesh ji sorry yes, to start ji yes please yeah actually uh, there are several people who have joined us from all over the world uh, from argentina and uh, so many other countries just want to introduce the examiners to them uh, the examiners are professor rajesh vishwakarma uh, professor bela prajapati uh, dr deepak and dr neepa delal so they are the examiners who are examining uh, the candidate name is dr shalu gupta a third year resident from civil hospital ahmedabad uh, just for your information and a few i uh, just want to ask a few questions uh, which so many people have been asking me just want to pass that question in case yes. they can answer uh, what is the difference between focal cord palsy and focal cord fixity and uh, this is one question what is the difference between uh, combined palsy and a uh, uh, um, complete or incomplete palsy and third is uh, oh, how do you define hoarseness these are some of the uh, right so we'll pass on the question to the candidate and she will answer right and janki yeah. the the examiners on panel right now to yeah. my left is dr neepa dalal oh she's yeah. she professor of ent at the other medical college in ahmedabad that is a municipal medical college ah, and sure. medical college right oh. and dr bela prajapati you already know yeah. right? and then you have dr viral dr viral prajapati with us oh, he is associate okay. professor with us i'm sorry dr viral prajapati Dr. and in my uh, absence dr dipesh darji was sitting uh, now he has moved to the audience side okay thank yeah. you yeah please yes yeah, shalu so the question from the audience is how do you define hoarseness or when do you say that the patient has hoarseness so hoarseness is defined as a coarse or rough sound which is produced when the free margin hoarseness is defined as a coarse or rough Course or rough. Well, I just want to small interrupt uh, because the I think the cameraman is asking you to see us. You don't have to see. Uh, you can see the examiners uh, because uh, it is just like an exam. You can see them and answer. Let it be a sort of a true exam. You don't have to face the camera. Don't don't get tense. You can see the examiners and answer. No problem. <laughs> yes. Look at this side and you answer. <laughs> you don't have to see the camera. You don't have to see the camera. Hoarseness, hoarseness is defined as the coarse or the rough sound which occurs when the free margins of the vocal cords are involved by any lesion. Yes. So, what is vocal cord fixity and what is the difference between palsy and fixity? When you call it vocal cord is fixed, yes. And it is vocal, vocal cord is, is paralyzed. Is fixed when the arytenoids are also not, also involved and arytenoids are also not move, not moving. then we call the so what fixes the arytenoid what where is the lesion ma'am ma the most commonly malignant or joint yes involving so, the free arytenoid joint yes so that fixes the vocal, vocal cord. cord and what about palsy palsy is only the membranous part of the vocal cord cord is involved not the arytenoids which are the different layers of the vocal cord um, there are five layers of vocal cord layer 1 is a epithelial layer it is pseudo stratified squamous epithelium then uh, lamina propria layer it is divided again into three layers first is superficial layer intermediate layer and the deep layer uh, superficial layer is also known as the rinky's uh, space and intermediate and the deep layer forms the vocal ligament and the last one is the vocalis muscle okay so we were talking about medialization thyroplasty yes, right which instrument specialized yes, instrument yes, it is injection you started with injection thyroplasty yeah. like so, so what is the explain. name of that instrument what are the different ways of doing it yes sir there are the there are using diff mm. different materials can be used for injection laryngoplasty there can be short term use uh, like uh, gel foam or carbox uh, carboxyl methyl cellulose then we can use uh, silicon teflon and uh, autologous fat can be used autologous fascia can also be used then hydroxyl appetite no 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 particularly in vocal see we are we are going one by one right don't generalize all the different methods or different materials used for medialization right first you said injection thyroplasty right means you use some sort of injection some material in the injection and you medialize the vocal cord so what are the different ways of doing that injection thyroplasty or medializing the vocal cord using something injection 
So mostly fat logo fat can be used yes. to in the you can level. use fat fat from yes. where will you take fat from ma'am uh, fat can be taken from the adipose tissue or from the thigh also we, uh, mostly the thigh is used why the fat from the thigh is used uh, because there is much bulk of fat is present there that is also. there in the abdomen also there are different types of fat in our body some are dissolved early some will take more much more time so the basic metabolic rate of, of the, the thigh fat, fat is, is less all right so it can survive better, better. all right for a long time so you take the fat you have harvested the fat then how do you inject the fat so first we'll have to prepare the fat we'll wash it with the we'll wash it with the 1 to 2 liter of saline to re uh, remove all the fatty acid that may cause inflammation and then we can we'll put it in on the uh, human insulin for 3 to 5 minutes so that to stabilize the cell wall and then we'll wash it with the linger linger lactate and then we'll make it in a form of a paste how do you make it uh, so by cr crushing it and uh, crushing it uh, properly then we'll make it up so how do you crush it because you have fat with you you said the different things that you will use to wash it then how do you crush it with a knife you have to make it into a semi semi solid no semi solid paste we yeah. will use a knife for with a knife you will make it into small pieces then so then we'll mix it in the Then we'll use a bruning syringe to. You will crush it. You can use a mortar, steel mortar, or you can use a bowl and a another hammer type thing, okay. and you can crush it, make it into thin, right? Liquefied. It will be Liquid. liquefied. Yes, sir. Right. And then once it is made into a paste, then you will inject. Yes, sir. What do you use to inject it? Sir, we use a bruning syringe when eighteen gauze needle. Uh, we'll. Bruning syringe is different. Or... What is a bruning syringe? Uh... लॉन्ग नीडल लाइनजेल नीडल and with that you can inject right earlier people even used to use that scalp vein also they used to inject it right and then there are other ways of injecting as well this injection you do it under local or general anesthesia right so when you are injecting how do you know or where, when to stop Uh, sir, we will uh, will insert the fiber of uh, flexible endoscope uh, through the. So nose. simultaneously, you will be doing Fle flexible endoscopy. a flexible endoscopy. So you will keep the endoscope in At such a way that you see the, the vocal, cords. vocal cord, sir, and as, as you can inject, right? So the easiest way is injection, which can medialize the vocal, vocal cord. Yes, What are the other ways of doing? medialization the other ways of doing medialization this uh, medialization can be done with injection in local also it can be done in ga also yes, right so uh, we can do the laryngeal framework surgery type 1 thyroplasty for medialization yeah. can you describe that type 1 thyroplasty yes sir in type 1 thyroplasty we so we Uh, we put an incision over the neck at the level of the thyroid cartilage okay. and then we'll accept, make the subplatysmal flap and we'll separate the strap muscles and when we'll expo we then expose the thyroid cartilage the inferior border of the thyroid cartilage is exposed we'll ex uh, incise the perichondrium and then uh, where the, will you put the incision so for uh, making a window we may put the incision 5 mm 5 to 7 mm from the midline laterally and a 2 to 3 mm superiorly from the inferior border of the thyroid cartilage Then we make a window, and in that we can put the uh, implant, like silicone implant or. Uh, no, there are there are standard guidelines, right? In a male, what yes, would be the size of your window? Yes. In a female, what would be the size of your window? Right? The yes. lower border of your margin. Yes. Would, should it be parallel to the lower uh, lower border of the thyroid cartilage? Right. Yes. And how much distance from the midline? 
Yes, so sir. all In thing is defined. What is the length of vocal cord in male and female? Sir, in ma'am, in males, so the length of vocal cord is seventeen to twenty-two mm, mm, seventeen to twenty-two mm, and in females, it is twelve point five to seventeen point five mm. Okay, so see that can this is that is just an average. It can vary from person to person, from race to race, right? So. you first of all you said that you will put an incision wherein you will make a window on the thyroid cartilage and the size of thyroid uh, of the window will depend upon the size of the patient the gender of the patient right and how do you what what will be the shape of the window will it be circle will it be square will it be a rectangle will it be a rhombus rectangular in shape in male it will be 12 by 5 mm size window and in female it will be around 10 by 4 mm okay so you you cut the cartilage in that much area and then what do you do so do you remove the cartilage or you push the cartilage so we will remove the so we will make a flap and then we will repose it no hmm. darshan yes okay what are the what are the materials used for medializing this it's mostly silicon and uh, gortex mala like, uh, tetrahydro tetrahydroxyethyl fluorine and uh, titanium also implant can also be used so titanium implants are available in different sizes right that can be used then you can use or you can make your own uh, block using a silicon block silicon and block. you can cut according to the size right and fit it then there are another uh, montgomerys blocks also yes. available there are uh, cubinx available there are different companies who have come up with different mm -hmm. sizes different implants different materials right and you can also use gortex material yes. as you said as a ribbon and just push it inside yes. and keep it yes. the thing that you have to be careful about when you are medializing is that the laryngeal surface of the perichondrium yes, does not get tear yes. right and you are you are observing directly yes. with a scope and you know how much medialization you do yes in fact when in when you are doing this in local you can ask the patient to phone it phone it right in fact you can also like you titrate you can set the voice of the patient you can say ask the patient to count 1 2 3 and you can tell him that they, okay now this voice you want or this voice you want and accordingly you can put in the silicon block or the prosthesis right and that's how you can use for the medialization thyroplasty right so is medialization thyroplasty the solution for vocal cord palsy does the vocal cord palsy improve with it yes sir it can improve it does not improve well palsy will not improve you are you are only you are only improving the voice yes sir right so you are only improving the voice of the patient so that the patient's air leakage stops or becomes minimal so that the patient can phonate well okay so that is the role for medialization thyroplasty okay and then but we have not yet come to the reason for the vocal cord palsy we do not know why this vocal cord palsy happened right and in this case as i heard the history patient already had a uh, ca breast operated could it be because of any secondaries because of ca breast yes sir it can definitely be due to the secondaries of the ca breast so first first of all you have to rule out any malignancy sort right or can it be an another malignancy secondary yes sir. one malignancy the patient already had can it be an another malignancy yes sir it can be there okay so yes. if there is a malignancy how will it present in a glottic lesion uh, in glottic malignancy so it will present with the voice same hoarseness of the patient will complain of the hoarseness of voice and if it is very very advanced or deeply infiltrating patient might have difficulty in breathing also patient will have may present with strider also so we will take one by one again if there is a glottic carcinoma vocal cord mobile there is a whitish patch on the vocal cord right you take a biopsy 
it is malignancy yes what is the treatment uh, sir in uh, since it uh, so vocal cords are mobile it uh, is mostly the t stage uh, so so we can go for radiotherapy and we can go for transoral microlaryngoscopic co2 excision laser excision so you can excise it with a laser laser or you can do a radiotherapy radiotherapy fine so what is the advantage of radiotherapy over the laser or laser over the radiotherapy the advantage of radiotherapy in this type of lesions advantage of radiotherapy over laser is the better voice outcome will, will be there in case of radiotherapy and uh, but in laser the advantage is that patient will be that is a just a day care procedure and patient can fit for work for an, from since another day but in radiotherapy patient will have to take multiple cycles of radiotherapy what are the side effects of radiotherapy some side effects of radiotherapy are uh, <laughs> there can be early early side effects and late side effects and early side effects mostly mucositis skin erythema will be there and uh, late side effects will be when osteoradio necrosis can occur cartilage erosion can occur so when it is t1 which is much better in t1 lesion ma'am mostly co2 laser excision is better which are the lesions which uh, commonly we see in anterior commissure or anterior part of larynx and which are the lesions commonly involves posterior part of larynx or vocal cords um, anterior part of larynx mostly in our vocal nodules vocal polyps cyst and uh, posterior part of the vocal cord involved mainly arytenoid granuloma uh, contact granuloma. contact granuloma intubation uh, intubation contact ulcer tuberculosis tuberculosis so what about juvenile laryngeal papilloma Ma'am, juvenile laryngeal papilloma, anterior part of the yes. vocal cords involved. Thank you. What is it? How will you treat papilloma? Ma'am, uh, if the papilloma. How patient presents to you with uh, juvenile if, uh, laryngeal papilloma? Ma'am, uh, if it is extensive papilloma, patient might present with a respiratory distress. So we can have But to be. We'll in to initial work. stage, patient may come with hoarseness of no, voice. Ma'am, patient change may of come voice. with hoarseness yes. of voice in initial stage. In advanced yes. stage, it may come from. Yes, with, with the strider. Strider yes. and respiratory distress. In that case, we'll have to first do urgent tracheostomy of the patient. Yes. And uh, why tracheostomy is not preferable in laryngeal papilloma? Tracheostomy is not done. Why it is not. Not preferable. I um, do not prefer. You yes. got the question, no? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the question came because you said that the patient comes with a papilloma. I will do a tracheostomy, which is mandatory in case of an emergency. When the patient is in distress, you have to do. But you try to avoid. avoid yeah, you uh, try to avoid a tracheostomy in an. Juvenile uh, papilloma case. Why? That is the question. The answer is again simple. Yes. Spread. Yeah, anybody? The chances an of spread are more yes. in case of papilloma. Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, it is due to viral infection and. Uh, Tracheostomy uh, can lead to the spread of the virus into the uh, uh, lower ear. Uh, or a long cold tracheostomy. Yes, and uh, it can lead to further complications. Should we avoid this as far as possible? Yes. Okay. So, and what is the treatment for it? Uh, so we can go for laser excision of the papilloma. So you use. Suppose we don't have laser. Then we can use a cold. Cold instruments we can excise. Yes, microlaryngoscopy. Microlaryngoscopy. Simple MLS. And you microlaryngoscopic surgery and cold instruments. Yes. So you yes. have to remove it either by laser or by cold instruments, or you can use another. Uh, what is the new technology? What are what are laryngeal, laryngeal things you can use? Laryngeal debride. Debrider can, can be used. Coblation. You can use a laryngeal wand for from coblation and use it, but. all said and done the best is the laser laser right so that is if you encounter a case of laryngeal papilloma right first we were discussing about the uh, malignancy on the vocal cord with vocal cord mobile right and you said that you do a laser or a radiotherapy okay but if the malignancy spreads in such a way that the vocal cord becomes fixed then what to do so there are different confined uh, to vocal cord but vocal cord is fixed 
So in case if vocal cord is fixed, then we will go for first uh, CT scan or MRI to to look for the erosion, invasion of the malignancy, whether it is involving the paraglottic space or preepiglottic space, or whether it is eroding the cartil thyroid cartilage or not, or anterior commissure is involved or not. Uh, in that, we will plan the management accordingly. Uh, if it is uh, involving the paraglottic and preepiglottic space and thyroid cartilage, what then, is paraglottic preepiglottic space? Um, pre what are the boundaries? Yes, ma'am. Uh, boundaries of preepiglottic space are uh, anteriorly it is bounded by the thyrohyoid membrane and the uh, hyoid bone. Posteriorly it is bounded by the infrahyoid part of the epiglottis. Superiorly by the thyro uh, epiglottic ligament and inferiorly by the uh, thyro epiglottic ligament. And paraglottic space it is a lateral uh, space lateral to the glot uh, paired space lateral to the glottis. Bounded uh, laterally by the thyroid cartilage, medially yes. by the piriform sinus, piriform fossa mucosa. Posteriorly, posteriorly by the piriform yes. fossa medially. mucosa, and uh, medially by the quadrangular membrane and the corner cilia. Corner meniscus and ventricle. Ventricle. Okay. Good. So it is suggestive of what involvement of pre-epiglottic and paraglottic space. Um, it is uh, my para. It is advanced. It is mostly T three stage. Uh, if yes. paraglottic and pre-epiglottic. T three or T four. T three or T. Ma'am, T four is more extra laryngeal spread if thyroid cartilage is you know, involved. Yes. And T. Ma'am, T three is paraglottic and pre-epiglottic mostly involved. Comes in T three. So T three and T four both are advanced stages of cancer. Uh, then yes. what are the different modalities? Okay. for treating okay. t3 and t4 mam we will mostly have to do the laryngectomy uh, we can go for partial laryngectomy or near total laryngectomy partial what is partial mm. it is not advisable partial laryngectomy is not advisable in advanced t3 and t4yes mam then we can so what are the in which cases you do partial uh, mam in T two uh, leg lesion like when vocal cord of partial but vertical or horizontal. horizontal partial, so in vertical partial or horizontal yes, partial. Yes. Horizontal and uh, partial. If the lesion is lateralized to one one side of the vocal cord, then we can go for partial laryngectomy, but yes. not done nowadays. And yes, so, because we have now laser and better yes. tools for treating the patient. Yes. So T three and for T three and T four, what are the Mam, modalities? Near, near yes. total laryngectomy, or we can go for radiotherapy, chemo, concurrent chemo radi radiotherapy. Also, we can go for if patient yes. is so uh, because there are very high risk of aspiration in laryngectomy, near total or total laryngectomy, and patient will have a permanent tracheostomy. So we can go for concurrent chemo radiotherapy. Okay. Now, such patients may present to you with strider as an ENT yeah. surgeon. So you will plan a tracheostomy in such patients. Yes, ma'am. So. Yes, what type of tracheostomy would you do in such patients with vocal cord malignancy or larynx? So we will do the high tracheostomy. Yes, why high tracheostomy is preferred? Anybody from the third the year audience. students? What is high tracheostomy? What is low tracheostomy? Yes. Take the mic. Take the mic. Take the mic. The level of the first and the second uh, tracheal ring, it is high. Mid is third and fourth, and low is at the fifth and sixth. And in uh, carcinoma, we do a high tracheostomy because we have to remove the specimen. So we remove the tracheostomy along with the specimen. So that you get a long stoma, long length of the, of the stoma for permanent tracheostomy. So always do a high tracheostomy when you go for when you see such patients with malignancy. So, then what are the methods of rehabilitation after total laryngectomy? Uh, no. We can give the prosthetic, prosthetic devices to the patient for speaking, like uh, uh, bloom singer prosthesis yes. and electronic, lar larynx. electronic yes. larynx. What is neoglottis? Neoglottis is uh, when the pharynx is uh, sutured with the uh, remaining part of the uh, uh, trachea. Uh, no, no, no. no. There's surgical opening is surgical created. Surgical opening yes. of the uh, skin. Uh, surgical opening of the stoma. The no. It is lung lung powered speech. The patient uh, uses the uh, air and. That is esophageal uh, speech. What is esophageal speech? That ma'am, that the uh, patient uh, uses the. So patient uses his pharyngeal, pharyngeal muscles, muscles to produce, to produce, the, speech. produce the speech. Yes, he swallows so air happens. and he air did vibrate the. You said Blomsinger prosthesis. What is that? How it is used and how does it help? 
that is a tracheoesophageal process that the patient uh, you put the device over the stoma and then uh, he uses the uh, he He uses the pharyngeal muscles to produce the voice with that. Uh, so he has to swallow air. Swallow, yeah. yes. Yes, this swallow air will. Air it is unidirectional. Yes. Valve, right? So it will vibrate the. It will vibrate the remaining part of the. Uh, See, when you say TEP, that means tracheoesophageal puncture. You do a TEP and put a Blomsinger prosthesis. right there are other processes also available it has a unidirectional valve right so when you inhale you have a reservoir of air when you exhale you pass that air through that valve into the esophagus right and then you use that uh, air to give esophageal speech yes. okay fine what else you were saying Blomsinger prosthesis. Then, an electronic larynx. Electronic larynx. What is that? Sir, it is a battery-operated device that put the patient put on the uh, lar lar larynx, and then it, it will vibrate the mus vibrate the muscles so mu muscles, and then it will produce the speech. But the speech is not very good. So it is an electronic speech, electronic. but it is good. In fact, the patient can communicate, and it is the easiest thing to do. is a visual speech you have to learn right you have to uh, learn to take in air bring out the air in such a way that the uh, esophageal muscles can vibrate right and you can use your oropharynx to produce voice yes. so that is different okay so coming back to your case which has a uh, vocal cord palsy right you said that you have done all investigation and finally you could not find anything it is idiopathic you waited for some time you gave speech therapy and then you went ahead for medialization thyroplasty so this is thyroplasty type 1 what are the other types of thyroplasty the type 2 thyroplasty is uh, explain each lateralization thyro lateral type 2 thyroplasty is the lateralization thyroplasty uh, and type type 3 thyroplasty is the shortening uh, shortening of the shortening thyroplasty and uh, type 4 is the length lengthening thyroplasty what are the uh, conditions where you do all these different thyroplasties uh, so type 2 thyroplasty is done in case of abductor uh, abductor palsy yes. and uh, type 3 is done in case of puber phonia which are the other methods that uh, you can do abductor palsy uh, which are the other Uh, treatment pathology or surgeries there are surgical treatments available for uh, this abductor paralysis uh, what is woodman's operation what is see how patient presents in bilateral abductor palsy i mean bilateral abductor palsy patient will present with the strider or respiratory yes. distress yes so Then, you want to create a gap yes so the strider is on exertion not at yes. rest yes no the surgery okay. yes on exertion yes yes sir and so uh, what are the different surgical methods or endoscopic so, surgeries available yeah ma'am and uh, anterior commissure why uh, posterior uh, uh, anybody from audience see yes. when you plan a surgery or a management and when you say that the patient has bilateral abductor palsy that means first of all you have to know what would be the position of the vocal cords so what would be the position of vocal cords in bilateral abductor palsy paramedian position paramedian okay yes. and they can adduct but not, not abduct. abduct okay so speech is almost normal but breathing is fine okay. so <laughs> if you if you come with a patient who has bilateral abductor palsy What will you do? How will you manage? Yes, Ishani. Will first the cordectomy. Yes. Operation or arytenectomy. Yes, that is Woodman surgery, endoscopic so, arytenectomy. Yes. Sir. You will you explain can... all that you have said. Yes. Then posterior cordectomy, whole cordectomy. Yes. Sir. Yes. And you can go for lesser assisted surgery also. Yes. 
मैम वी कैन गो फॉर कॉडेक्टमी वी कैन गो फॉर मीडियल एरिटोनोइडेक्टमी एंड वी कैन गो फॉर लेजर असिस्टेड कंप्लीट यस लेजर असिस्टेड कंप्लीट कैन बी डन हां एरिटोनेक्टमी विद पोस्टियर कॉडेक्टमी यस देयर आर वैरायटीज ऑफ द सर्जरीज यू कैन परफॉर्म यस मैम ओके व्हाट इज टाइप 3 टाइप 3 इज शॉर्टनिंग थायरोप्लास्टी शॉर्टनिंग ऑफ द वोकल कॉर्ड इज डन यस इन व्हिच कंडीशन यू विल ट्यूबरफोनिया इन ट्यूबरफोनिया मोस्ट केसेस कैन what is type 4 type 4 is lengthening of the vocal cord it is done for feminization for feminizing laryngoplasty also okay so vocal cord palsy you said the different management that can be done for vocal cord palsy right now what are the complications in doing all this uh, in thyroplasty say uh, type 1 thyroplasty yes. what are the complications that can happen The hematoma formation can be there. Laryngeal edema can be patient can present with laryng can have laryngeal edema, and then extrusion of the implant can occur if wrong placement of the implant. The patient will not have any improvement. Shorter implant or longer implant can be put. Precautions you will take post operatively, or what will you see post operatively? So, ma'am, we will see the ma'am will first we will give the steroid uh, the steroid uh, course of post operatively to prevent the laryngeal edema. Hmm. Patient might have difficulty in breathing post operatively if the so more injectable or nebulization. Injectable and nebulization both. Both. Okay. What else? What else? amara infection can occur post operative infection due to incision of the perichondrium chondrium so we will give the antibiotic injectable antibiotic so these are these are the routine complications that can happen during the surgeries and you have to be prepared for that okay so vocal cord palsy you manage in this way then we were talking about the malignancy malignancy you said that if it is on the vocal cord mobile vocal cord you will go for laser excision or in some cases radiotherapy if the lesion is bigger right and uh, then you said that depending upon the extent of the lesion you will decide what type of laryngectomy you will do right partial vertical partial or horizontal partial or a total laryngectomy right so when we say laryngectomy and when we plan to do a laryngectomy what are the points that we have to consider and how do you go about so we consider with the patient should matlab patient should not have the permanent tracheostomy patient should have not does not have the risk of respiration aspiration sorry so we'll plan accordingly so so how will you prevent aspiration in laryngectomy what procedure is done usually when you perform a laryngectomy to prevent aspiration uh, ma'am in a partial laryngectomy and near total laryngectomy there is less chances of uh, less risk of aspiration so we plan that previously they were doing cricothyroidectomy cricothyroidectomy supracricoid uh, supracricoid uh, thyroidectomy can be done with the greco uh, uh, hyoid epiglottopexy yes now what is tors when it is indicated in uh, cancer transoral robotic surgery when it is indicated what are the indications of it what do you mean by that ma'am this is the robotic surgery we can do, do the small uh, small carcinomatous growth small malignant growth with the help of laser can be removed so stage you will go for tors t1 or t2 stage What are the advantages of TORS? Ma'am, better. Same. The disadvantages same. of length. So you enumerate them. Uh, Ma'am, the pa patient will not have any chance risk of aspiration. Patient will not have any tracheostomy. Uh, patient can be patient can be back to work uh, soon after surgery. So no the morbidity is less. No core morbidity. Yes. As compared to the laryngectomy patients. Yes. anything else you would like to say about the management of this patient vocal cord palsy unilateral vocal cord palsy that to this case had a left vocal cord palsy yes the reinnervation procedure can also be done yes what uh, are the reinnervation procedures uh, sir in that case we can go do the uh, 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 reinnervation with the help of ensa cervicalis or hypoglossal nerve 
okay and then lady current tarangil out to be reinnervated and uh, then uh, laryngeal pacing is also done what is that so in that case the uh, efferent input is with the phrenic nerve uh, which is active uh, which is stimulated on inspiration and the efferent in output is on the muscle so the muscle get activated with the, on phrenic nerve this is laryngeal pacing okay so this is newer advancement so uh, reinnervation what are the nerves that are used sir ansa cervicalis and hypoglossal nerve okay which go, which works better ansa cervicalis why so uh, because it supplies the sternohyoid and uh, thyroid muscle that uh, that uh, that that are not of much use to the patient that will not cause any comorbidity after okay fine yes ajun take a mic yeah okay right so ansa cervicalis is a better now for reinnervation right and then how much time you have to wait for the reinnervation to start working so uh, within 4 to 6 weeks so so fast minimum 6 months it takes right so you have given the options of management for vocal cord palsy say your patient had a change of voice and it was not vocal cord palsy it was a uh, say a polyp yeah differential diagnosis no different uh, for vocal cord pulse Voc- change of change voice. of voice uh no no vocal nodules vocal polyps uh, sulcus vocalis vocal cyst spasmodic yes. dysphonia muscle tension dysphonia then uh, vocal cord growth then yes. uh, any pre malignant lesion like leukoplakia erythroplakia yes you but mm-hmm. laryngitis chronic laryngitis any tuberculosis so tuberculous laryngitis hmm uh, how will you differentiate vocal cord cyst and nodule suppose nodule is i mean developing nodule and cyst and how will you differentiate it is generally bilateral and the vocal cord cyst is generally unilateral yes. and uh, vocal cord on stroboscopy also we can differentiate it on stroboscopy vocal cord nodule will have the normal mucosal wave but vocal cord cyst will have the abnormal wave mucosal pattern wave pattern yes. because it involves the deep matlab lamina propria layer how will you treat the vocal cord cyst the vocal cord cyst can be treated by the excision uh, either by the laser or by the cold instrument we can do the you will excise or mass supplementation we can do mass supplementation we can mass supplementation along with the cyst wall removal yes What are the different types of vocal cord polyp you see? And uh, it can be uh, hemorrhagic polyp, telangiectatic yeah. polyp, or uh, uh, vocal cord uh, ectasia. Yes. How will you remove that particular lesion? Suppose polyp patient comes with the polyp, vocal cord polyp. How will you remove that? which instruments you will use we will do the micro laryngoscopic surgery with the help of the yes. micro laryngoscope we will see the polyp and then we can use uh, excise it with the help of a laser or the cold instrument forceps using forceps yes. what uh, is micro flap technique yes ma'am there are three three type kind of incisions are there lateral uh, flap uh, medial flap and micro mini flap technique and the micro mini flap technique we put the incision over the medial side medial side of the lesion and we'll excise the uh, polyp and then we'll repose it the flap Uh, the we will put the flap back for the people sure. okay uh, what is the treatment for rinkes edema um, in rinkes edema is the collection of the fluid in the rinkes space in that yes. case we'll uh, what is a, cl- a picture vocal cord picture of uh, laryngeal uh, picture of link rinkes uh, edema vocal cord will be edematous and swollen yes. and uh, bilateral is generally bilateral and yes. uh, in that case we'll uh, Uh, the patient for speech therapy first if not improvement with the no improvement with the speech does it improve with speech therapy generally not improve with the speech yes. therapy and then we we'll what is rinkes space 
Now brain cage space is the submucosal space on the superficial lamina propria, below the superficial lamina propria. Mm -hmm. And so what will you do exactly? Ma'am, we'll put the incision over the entire vocal cord length from yes. the anterior commission to the vocal Post process. Yes. And then we'll uh, drain the fluid out, aspirate the fluid out, and then uh, flap, my excess epithelium will be uh, my ex excised, uh, and then the mm -hmm. flap is deposited back. And How will you treat chronic? Or you may do stripping, stripping of the stripping of the of epithelium. Yes. Yes. And how will you treat chronic laryngitis? Um, chronic laryngitis is generally treated by the uh, uh, antibiotics uh, or uh, What is steroid. the laryngeal picture of chronic laryngitis? Um, the, uh, and you see vocal cord thicken and congested, congested. persistent thickening Con and congestion. Congestion will be, uh, yeah. congestion. Do you think there. it will help, your conservative management will help? Now, the cause of, what is the cause of the chronic laryngitis will Maybe find out. What are the different is? causes of chronic laryngitis? Um, like that can be bacterial causes by viral causes uh, and then tuberculosis then sarcoidosis and uh, uh, so how will you treat it if, if it is bacterial then we'll give the antibacterial uh, drugs or uh, okay the, along with the antibacterial what tubers. else would you like to give in chronic laryngitis what is the precipitating factors in chronic laryngitis Upper respiratory tract. Acid reflux. Yes. All okay. right. Laryngopharyngeal reflux. Yes. Will yes. Will, uh, treat the patient for the GRD. Yes. How yes. will you treat the patient then? No, the the anti uh, 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 proton pump inhibitor. Yes. And, yes. Uh, for how long you will continue? Uh, continue for four to six months. Okay. Would you like to go for biopsy? Suppose you see persistent thickening of the vocal cord. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Does it help? Yes, ma'am. It will help. Biopsy can be taken. If there is a leukoplakic patch on the vocal cord, then how will you put a differential diagnosis? So and what will you do then? Leukoplakic patch on the vocal cord is the pre-malignant condition, so so we'll have to treat it uh, accordingly. That can be uh, varicose lesion, varicose carcinoma, or uh, what is varicose carcinoma? The varicose carcinoma is a well, uh, uh, the exophytic growth of. Anybody from the third year, what is varicose lesion of the vocal cord and how will you treat it? Proliferative growth, ma'am. Proliferative growth is of uh, squamous cell carcinoma also. But where you say it as a varicose carcinoma, you are right, partially it is a proliferative growth. But why it is called a varicose carcinoma? How will you treat it? Excision. Why you want to go for an excision preoperatively? There is an exophytic growth on the vocal cord. Because it can become malignant. It has a propensity. So, what is the definition of varicus? Proliferative pre malignant growth that can be malignant. It is a very, very well, well differentiated, differentiated squamous cell malignancy. So whenever you see a proliferative growth on the vocal cord, many a times if you take a biopsy, it will come as non-malignancy. Twice, thrice, again. And that is the diagnosis of varicose carcinoma. Do you get me? Yes. So when you do not get a malignancy and you see a exophytic growth on the vocal cord, you should think of a varicose lesion. You may get only a dysplasia. You have to treat it with CO2 laser. All right. Yes. And the other thing, keratosis. Yes, sir. Keratosis is also. What is that? It is also the pre-malignant conditions of the vocal cord, a whitish lesion seen on the vocal cord. We have to excise that. We'll take the biopsy and then we'll excise it. So you will do an excision biopsy. Yes, sir. And then it again recurs. We'll again. So you will use a laser to excise it. 
so that it does not recur or even if it recurs it will take some time okay so the lesions that you talked about uh, the larynx you had the case of vocal cord palsy different conditions you have very well outlined you talked about the thyroplasty you talked about the differential diagnosis you talked about the provisional diagnosis of your case right so once and you also talked about the stroboscopy right that uh, how the stroboscope is used for diagnosing and what are the different ways it can help okay and uh, that improves your management part anything else you would like to add your patient has vocal cord palsy has a uh, history of ca breast operated right so in the management of vocal cord palsy you think whatever you have said is fine and nothing more else more is needed right your your patient the patient which you have shown today would benefit it will benefit with atheroplasty type 1 yes sir right because there is no other reason for it to have a vocal cord palsy right and we also on the sidelines talked about the vocal cord polyp the uh, juvenile this papillomas right carcinomas anything else sir in the management of this patient in the management of this patient or any other reason you would like to talk about the larynx what are our common advice after phono surgery or microlingual surgery no what is do's voice, and don'ts after mls voice rest to the patient voice rest or voice conservation what is the difference between voice rest and voice conservation voice rest is like complete uh, not so you want to tell your patient not no, to speak no, at all no, no voice for 3 to 4 days complete voice rest and then after voice conservation is it possible complete voice rest bilkul bole nahi so mm. patient don't speak at all no ma'am it's not generally possible but then we advise voice yes. conservation so whenever necessary he necessary. should speak right see when you say voice conservation that means you have to stress on the fact Speak. that the patient should not shout one thing and at the same time you should not whisper also the maximum damage to the vocal cord occurs when you whisper right because you let air pass through and in that air you have the vocal cord spluttering yes. right so whispering can cause more damage shouting can cause more damage but when you talk in the normal tone it will not cause damage yes. right so talk you have to instruct very clearly that the patient has to talk in the normal tone right and whenever needed so when you when the patient does this there will be an automatic voice conservation right yes. so that is how you will ask the patient to proceed and what are the post op advice that you will tell to the patient say suppose you have operated a patient with a vocal cord cyst as you were describing that you do a micro flap and then remove it and then deposit it back right so if you have operated a patient with vocal cord cyst what are the post operative advices that you will give it will keep hydrated how do you keep it hydrated regular regular sips of water regular intervals then uh, not to have spicy food and uh, then this voice conservation not to shout and whisper then uh, what is hydro dissection uh, ma'am hydro dissection uh, uh, like suppose it is a if it is a polyp or a cyst then we'll in, inject the some saline uh, in the beneath the beneath the lamina propria lamina propria layer so that that is separates from the vocal ligament so that we do not do injury to the vocal ligament yes it is very important while you are operating you should not damage the vocal ligament other it will otherwise it will cause permanent damage to the voice yes you are talking about the post operative advices to avoid irritants and we, do you do you routinely or ever advise after a surgery on the vocal cords to the patient to go to the speech therapist post op speech therapy yes sir post op speech therapy in all cases or sometimes if sometimes then when
Okay, what are the reasons for uh, vocal cord nodules? Yes, a voice abuse, vocal abuse, vocal misuse, screaming. So overuse or misuse of voice, right? This is a very simply said term, but most of the time it is because of the faulty way of speaking also, yes, right? Because these patients would be using muscles which are not supposed to be used at different times, right? So. you have to train the patient say vocal cord nodule if you have to operate first of all the patient has to unlearn what he has been following right so for that you have to send the patient for speech therapy so speech therapy then surgery then again speech therapy if you don't do this the patient is not going to improve right so that's how the planning should be made and when whenever you get a laryngeal case or in in a practice also you always have to have people who are trained to deal with the larynx like you should always have a speech therapist with you right you have to analyze the movement of the vocal cord if you have a stroboscope very fine very good if you don't have then you have to go by your clinical judgments right you have to be well equipped to operate on these cases you have to be well trained to operate on this uh, vocal cords then then you can justify the patient and then and then the patient can benefit otherwise the patient uh, if an underdone surgery is there then the patient may not benefit right or if you overdo then the patient would worsen yes. right so it is better that you get trained for it and then do so thank you shalu for uh, a very good presentation that you have made you have covered almost everything that we wanted Now we can take uh, Janki some questions if you have from yeah, the audience. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I really thank uh, uh, Professor Rajesh Shankarma, Professor Bela Japati, and uh, Doctor Nipa uh, Dilal and uh, Doctor Viral Prajapati uh, for uh, excellent conduct of this exam. It was, in fact, I had uh, typed that uh, it was a rain, like a tsunami. You were asking questions on a very nice candidate who was very, very well prepared. Dr. Shilu, a uh, very very big hand for you. Uh, very very nicely prepared. The whole world has told this, not me. The whole world has told this, and uh, really you are uh, courageous to answer all the questions. Actually, uh, ca can we go to the? Uh, I think uh, you've been asked enough. I'm sure, and uh, you'll be exhausted, so you'll not ask any more questions. It's already you know 9:52. Two hours of bombardment, uh, rapid fire questions to you. Well done, Dr. Shalu, uh, from all over the world. In fact, some people from Philippines also commented. They are asking so tough questions. Please uh, reduce the uh, this one uh, quality. <laughs> We are so it's so tough like that. So from Argentina also they have uh, you know they have got around two thousand five hundred people who have watched this program. So um, let us also get introduced. Is Dr. Krishna there? Like last uh, time she presented, uh, Dr. Krishna. We remember uh, Dr. Krishna. No, she is not there today. She is in uh, emergency. Yeah, we are missing her anyway. But uh, can the others also introduce themselves as the last part of the uh, session, uh, and then we'll have a few announcements, and then we'll call it a day. So, uh, doctors, uh, are you are you all have have you all got introduced last time? Uh, all of you, or there are a few. Almost more? all of them have been. There may be oh. some new additions also. Yeah, if you want to get introduced, you can definitely do it. Because Who was not introduced last time can stand up and introduce himself. Yeah, last time the people who have not come can introduce themselves. They'll be known throughout the world. The whole world is watching you. This program will be with you. Or you can introduce yourself again. Yeah, you can do that uh, honestly. Because yes. Again and again, people are watching so yeah, much. Yeah, from behind. Yeah, start from behind. The one who answered very well, actually. Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, your mic is not on, madam. Mic, mic. Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, Doctor Shelly Mehta from uh, NHL Municipal Medical College, Ahmedabad. Yeah. Doctor Shelly Shah, NHL MMC, Ahmedabad. Doctor Ankur Dhanani, Sarada Ben Hospital, NHL MMC. Oh no, the yes. voice is gone. Yes. 
डॉक्टर नेहा बगा एल जी हॉस्पिटल डॉक्टर हेमंगिनी परमार एल जी हॉस्पिटल डॉक्टर ध्वनि शाह एल जी हॉस्पिटल डॉक्टर श्वेता मित्तल एनएचएल म्युनिसिपल मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर किनारी राठौर एनएचएल म्युनिसिपल मेडिकल कॉलेज वीएस हॉस्पिटल अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर अमृता दास बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर मिताली बरोलिया बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर अमन प्रजापति बीजे मेडिकल डॉक्टर केवल पटेल बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर निकिता गावे बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर जयदीप सिंह मकोना फ्रॉम बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर वैशाली पटेल बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर सौरभ बैनर्जी बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर हसीद पटेल बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर श्रीधर खेतानी बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर ध्वनि मेहता बीजे बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद सगुफा पठान बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर ईशानी पटेल बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद डॉक्टर दर्शन परिक बीजे मेडिकल कॉलेज अहमदाबाद राइट थैंक यू वेरी मच सो जानकी जी बिकॉज बिकॉज मेनी ऑफ द रेसिडेंट्स आर बिजी इन इमरजेंसी we have a foreign body bronchus there and there are so another for you of the uh, consultants have also gone to the ot right oh. so and simultaneously we are having this session also yeah 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 we are missing professor uh, kalpesh ji also right last time uh, he was there so yeah, i just want to uh, both have gone to you all friends number one is that if you had seen uh, several uh, people have started doing grand rounds as a sort of you know uh, uh, i saw the brochure so but uh, i will tell you whatever they do you are the pioneer you have done the first grand rounds according to the record place uh, a very very big congratulations to uh, civil hospital ahmedabad so this is uh, on, to place it on records i saw i saw a lot of brochures after that uh, like grand rounds grand rounds but you have done the uh, first number one number two is that uh, uh, the last time has been very well received we have been seen by 10 10000 people which is actually a very very good uh, and so many post graduates have really uh, asked me sir do when is the next grand rounds when is the right so really thanks to alambic for having done this um, so um, i think uh, next time uh, we will be joined by uh, dr ranjan ayer sir i'm not very sure uh, i think yeah, I, he has confirmed yeah, yeah we have been asking we have been asking different examiners to join in so yeah. like this time we have dr nipa dalal from the different medical college Fantastic. we have also asked uh, ranjan to join in the next uh, grand round so he has agreed and he will come for the next round yeah, so we will, we will keep on adding one 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 each time yeah right. fantastic yeah. fantastic sir so, so uh, different questions and different uh, people coming like in the exam you have some examiner who are external you don't yeah. know yeah, what what they ask right exactly, exactly. so i think uh, it has been a very good session sir thank you for the initiative thank you for staying back for so long and all the students who stayed back for so long it's really a great initiative you are doing and benefiting the whole post graduate community all around the world really really a big thank you i will uh, consult alambic and you for the next the third program on the nos uh, we'll have a nos case from you right. and uh, and then we will uh, plan for uh, different medical college if you have a uh, few more cases we are ready to do with you because you are your simply super uh, un unbelievable stuff thank you very much sir and uh, thank you janki thank you alambic for this program and we'll call it a day now thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you thank you bye shut down I have to stop here. Yeah.